Hello and welcome to the Irish History Podcast. My name is Finn DeWire and this is a review of Black 47 the movie. This coming Wednesday, Ireland sees the release of one of the most eagerly awaited films of the year, Black 47. Now strange as it might sound, this is the first film I'm aware of to focus on the Great Famine, even though it is the most important event in modern Irish history. If you're not familiar with the term Black 47, It refers to 1847, one of the worst years not only of the Great Hunger, but in Irish history as a whole. The film itself boasts some pretty big name actors, Stephen Ray, Jim Broadbent, most recently of Game of Thrones fame, and Hugo Weaving of The Matrix and Lord of the Rings. If you don't recognise the names, they're all faces you'll have seen before. Having covered the Great Famine extensively in this podcast, I was delighted to get tickets to the gala screening of the movie to review it in advance of its general release in Ireland on September the 5th. It's being released in the USA and the UK on September the 26th. So in this podcast, I'm hopefully going to give you a sense of what the movie is about and what you can expect. Then, given this is a history podcast, I'll focus on how it deals with the history of the Great Famine, where it excelled, where it fell down in this regard, and then finally I'll give you my two cents on what I thought of it as a film. It's worth bearing in mind this episode does not tell the history behind the film. However, this is all covered in a show I have just released called The Road to Black 47, The Great Hunger Explained, where you can hear the history of these events. If you're listening to this in advance on Patreon, that show is not ready yet, but you'll have it long before it's in iTunes. If you want an even more detailed version of the history of the Great Famine, there are 23 episodes now in my series on the Great Hunger so far, which covers the story up to late 1847. I'll be continuing the history of the Great Famine into 1848 and beyond in the coming episodes. Before I begin, I want to thank show patrons. My research, writing, recording and editing is funded by listeners who have become patrons of the show. Now patrons get lots of bonus features including exclusive access to my own documentary on the Great Famine called Forgotten Fields made with the filmmaker Jamie Goldrick along with bonus podcasts and episode guides. You can get all this exclusive material by becoming a patron today at patreon.com forward slash Irish podcast. That's patreon p-a-t-r-e-o-n dot com forward slash Irish podcast. In each episode, I want to thank individual patrons whose support makes the show possible. And today, I want to thank Armand R. Pelequin, Jack Higgins, Autumn Johnson, James Heenan, Keith Mannion, James Murphy, Kim Longwell, Pordrick 7A, Jan Hoot and Z. Varga. So now, to Black 47, The Review. To begin... I want to explain a bit about the premise of this film and what exactly Black 47 is because it certainly isn't your average movie. If I had to summarise it, it's a western that's set in Ireland during the Great Famine. For a more detailed explanation of the film, the synopsis of the filmmakers themselves is probably the best place to start. So what I'm going to read to you now is from their press pack that accompanied the film and it summarises the movie as follows. It's 1847 and Ireland is in the grip of the Great Famine that has ravaged the country for two long years. Feeney, a hardened ranger who has been fighting for the British army abroad, abandons his post to return home and reunite with his estranged family. He's seen more than his share of horrors, but nothing prepares him for the famine's hopeless destruction of his homeland. He discovers his mother's death to starvation and his brother hanged by the brutal hand of the English. With little else to live for, he sets on a destructive path to avenge his family, systematically working his way up the political and social hierarchy of 19th century Ireland. Hannah, an ageing British soldier and famed tracker of deserters, is sent to stop Feeney before he can further stoke the fires of revolution. But Hannah and Feeney are old army comrades, with a mutual respect forged by their times fighting together. Personal bonds and shifting allegiances cause both men to question their motives as they are tested to the limit by the hellish landscape of the Great Hunger. It's heady stuff for sure and a brilliant premise for a film. Over the rest of the podcast, I'm going to look at two things. 
whether it works historically, something that I'm qualified to speak about, and then I'll give you my two cents on what it's like as a film, but this comes with a health warning. I'm not a movie critic by any stretch. What I am most interested in, though, was the historical aspect. Black 47 is a movie set in the 1840s, during what was the most important event in modern Irish history, and given this movie will be watched by more people than will ever read books on the Great Famine, it's going to, for good or bad, shape how people understand the history of this event. So how accurate is its portrayal of 1840s Ireland? I should say, in terms of analysing films from a historical perspective, I'm not a purist. I don't expect films set in the past to be a perfect depiction of that period. Ultimately, if we want to learn the history of a given period, going to a film that is a work of fiction isn't a good place to start. If you want to know more about the history of the Great Famine, I'd recommend reading a book, or not to miss out on an opportunity for some self-promotion, listen to my podcast series. At the end of the day though, it is important to recognise that filmmakers are there to entertain us. Their job is not to educate us. It's important to remember this. History is full of questions and ambiguity that we, as historians, have the luxury of teasing out over thousands of words. A filmmaker doesn't have this. They have a few minutes to explain key events. So we shouldn't expect this movie to be coming up with succinct histories or new hot takes on the Great Famine. So all these caveats aside, let's get on with it then. During the opening 20 minutes, Black 47 sets out the historical context. There's a great sequence that depicts the horrors of the Great Famine, a very evocative scene of a funeral where the mourners are huddled around a reusable coffin. This is situated beside a pile of bodies, each one being momentarily put into the coffin before the bottom drops out and the corpse is dumped into a mass grave and the process of a famine funeral starts for the next body. There are numerous other memorable scenes as well. The opening shots show the main character, Feeney, returning home, having been away for years, encountering starving people staggering through villages, a skull in mud along the road, abandoned landscapes covered in the ruins of evicted homes, and then the brutality of an eviction, followed by multiple shots of people squatting in makeshift tents after being evicted. This is all very true to contemporary accounts. One of the most evocative scenes I found is where Feeney spends the night in a house with his dead relatives lying in the corner. I thought this, along with the general depiction of famine Ireland in the late 1840s, was well done. And this is, I think, a pretty important part of the film. This is, after all, going to be the first time we've ever seen the famine visualised in this way. And I expect many people will find some of this shocking. Overall, from my experience of talking to people, the Great Famine is actually generally far worse than most Irish people imagine. Now, I don't mean the conspiracy theories propounded by people like Tim Pak Coogan are true, but rather that individuals endured far more than we might imagine and their experiences are far worse. So, many Irish people will be shocked by some of the scenes in this film, which, if anything, it should be said, present a dulled-down version of the reality of the Great Famine. Indeed, the historian John Dorney, in his review on theirishstory.com, which I'll link in the show notes, makes the point that they could have gone further in this regard. But I feel, overall, the general scenes of the famine are well done. Aside from these scenes, there are some very evocative landscape shots throughout the movie that give a more general sense of what Ireland looked like in the late 1840s. Now, to appreciate this aspect of the film, it's worth bearing in mind 19th century Ireland was a remarkably different place than Ireland is today. Rural Ireland was heavily populated in a way we would struggle to envisage. For example, over a million people lived in the three counties of Mayo, Galway and Roscommon. In the 1840s, what are abandoned landscapes today were teeming with life. The film depicts this different society in several scenes, when the main character Feeney moves through landscapes dense with houses, many of which have been destroyed through famine evictions. This is really interesting, although the CGI employed to recreate this is not of the quality we are used to in shows like Game of Thrones. However, I think it's only fair to recognise that if we want to see niche chapters in our history depicted on the big screen, we're going to have to accept it will not be able to have the enormous budgets required to do this perfectly. Putting these general scenes of 19th century life to one side, I want to focus on the actual historical information conveyed in the film now. This is unquestionably the tricky bit. The filmmakers had to explain an event that takes place over years in a really short, succinct way that engages the viewer. 
Black 47 spends a few minutes at the very beginning setting out the major events of the famine between 1845 and the time the events it depicts supposedly take place, that's 1847. This is done in a very unconventional way through a series of conversations between the main character Feeney, who has just returned home in 1847, and his sister, who has lived through the previous two years in Ireland. I have to say, for me, this part of the film didn't work. It's done, as I say, through a series of conversations, but these take place in Irish. The filmmakers are to be lauded for using Irish given the scene takes place in Connemara in West Galway, where Irish would have been the first language of the poor. However, choosing this context to set out the history of the Great Famine is problematic. Most people don't have conversational Irish, so they are dependent on subtitles, and the style used for these is a bit bizarre. Rather than place the subtitles at the bottom of the screen, they are placed in different locations, which is distracting. Overall, I felt it would have been far better to explain the historical context in the traditional manner of a few frames of text at the very beginning. While this is mainly a style-related issue, in terms of the actual historical content presented in these conversations, I had one major issue in what is portrayed, and this is the emphasis they give to one aspect of the famine. The mother of the main character Feeney has died while he was away because she refused to do what is called taking the soup. Now to take the soup is a well-known phrase in Ireland which refers to Irish Catholics who converted to Protestantism to get soup from Protestant preachers who gave out food on the condition that an individual converted. The problem I have is that while this did happen it was not a common experience and certainly was not something that should be included in a general summation of the Great Famine. However, from watching Black 47, you would get the impression that it was a major theme of the Great Hunger. Aside from this, there are also some pretty big omissions in the history they portray in the film. For example, there's no mention of workhouses, as far as I can remember, which are a far more important part of the story of the Great Famine. I felt that the numerous references to taking the soup, therefore, distorts how people will understand the events of the late 1840s from watching the film. Now perhaps the filmmakers wanted to include some reference to the very real sectarian tensions in Irish society in the 19th century, but for me the manner in which it's done only serves to warp our understanding of the famine and massively exaggerate what was ultimately a minor aspect of it. Aside from the direct historical information presented, aspects of the narrative of the film are used to try and explain some of the complexity of the story of the famine, and I think this by and large works well. While the filmmakers unquestionably lay the blame at the door of the British government, it admirably does try to convey the reality that the story is more complex and that some Irish people, for example, unquestionably use the crisis of the Great Famine to further their own ends. An example of this is the land agent of the local aristocrat, Lord Kilmichael. More on that name later, but back to the land agent. He carries out evictions and prepares a harvest for export, but crucially, he's an Irishman, something that reflects the reality of the Great Hunger. So far, I've heavily focused on the history, and this has by and large led me to talk about what are the opening parts of the film. And this is because the historical aspects are front-loaded into the opening 20 or so minutes, and then it fades as the movie progresses. This makes the film hard to pin down, and at times it feels disjointed. Black 47, as the synopsis makes clear, aims to be a historical drama, but these events are depicted in what is essentially a Western. The Western theme is very consciously evoked throughout Black 47. One of the main characters, Hannah, he's the ageing British soldier and famed tracker mentioned in the synopsis and brilliantly played by Hugo Weaving, but he could literally have walked off the set of a Clint Eastwood Western. Now I have no issue with this and he doesn't seem out of place, However, overall the two genres, the western on the one hand and the historical drama on the other, feel like they're kind of constantly competing rather than complementing each other. I felt the film struggled to find a balance between these two themes. At times the historical scenes in the film feel like they're floating somewhat, dislocated and divorced from the characters and the actual story. This is not helped by the fact that some of the historical references are pretty obscure. For example, at times throughout the film, ribbon men are referenced without any explanation as to who or what they are. While anyone who has read up on Irish history will be familiar with the term, it's not commonly used today. It is, after all, a 19th century word to describe agrarian secret societies. 
They also refer to the poor rate, which was a local tax used to fund workhouses and famine relief, which is central to how the famine unfolds, but it is not really well integrated into the film and may leave viewers somewhat confused. I should say though, these are ultimately minor points. Before moving on to what I thought of Black 47 as a movie, there is one other general issue I had with the film from a historical point of view. This is the naming of the local aristocrat, Lord Kilmichael. This is a really bizarre choice of name on behalf of the writers. Lord Kilmichael is a fictional character, but Kilmichael is well known in Irish society as the location of the 1920 IRA ambush, which was a pivotal moment in the Irish War of Independence. Why they chose to evoke this of all names is beyond me, but it doesn't help when you're trying to portray the complexities of the famine to evoke a battle in the Irish War of Independence that took place 70 years later. Now next I'm going to move on to what I thought of it as a film, but first I want to take a quick break. So now I'm going to talk a bit about what I thought of the movie as a whole. I'll start this part of the review by saying I'm not a film critic and I actually don't go to the cinema on a regular basis, but here's my two cents. So to begin with the actors, the performances of the two main central characters are both very good. The actors in question are the Australian James Freshville and Hugo Weaving, both of whom I thought were excellent and Weaving, who you'll recognise from The Matrix and Lord of the Rings, was particularly memorable. Freshville's Irish, which he learned for the film, was brilliant, and his Irish accent when speaking English holds up throughout, despite the fact he's Australian. They're supported by great performances from Jim Broadbent and Stephen Ray, who probably puts in the best performance in the film. Now you haven't heard me talking about female characters in the film, and that's because there are almost none. The Bechdel test is a good feminist critique of films, and to pass a film only needs two female characters to have a conversation that is not about a man. Black 47 fails abysmally, not because two women don't have that conversation, but bizarrely, there is only one female character who is a very minor role. There's no reason for this. Some historical films could perhaps justify a heavily male-dominated cast if they were depicting a war zone in World War II where few women were present, but this cannot be said when talking about Ireland in the 1840s. On an overall level, I felt Black 47 struggled to define itself. The opening sequence sets out what seems to be a film about the Great Famine where history will take centre stage. This fades as the movie progresses and the Western revenge story takes over. At times the historical aspects return but the two themes are not interwoven well and the viewer is left wondering why certain scenes are included. Trying to include both themes clearly also left the editors with very limited space and time and the plot suffers for this. It moves along at a very fast and sometimes disjointed pace. The relationships between the main characters are not developed enough and we are left perplexed as to why some characters take certain courses of action which would make more sense if we knew more about their relationship to the other characters in the film. Overall I would say Black 47 is not really a film about the Great Famine. It's a western set to the backdrop of the Great Famine and I don't think there's anything really wrong with this. As I said at the start, filmmakers are there to entertain us primarily, not educate us. However, in Black 47, that historical backdrop dominates at times, which from my perspective is great, and most of you listening to this will probably enjoy it for this reason, but it does undermine the plot. All that said, it's definitely worth going to see. It's worth saying I approached this with a very critical eye. In terms of picking a subject from Irish history, there is nothing more difficult than the Great Famine, and this is a good attempt to portray this key moment in our past on the big screen. When you see the movie, let me know what you think. I'm really keen to hear your opinions. If you want to know more about the history behind The Great Famine, check out my podcast, The Road to Black 47, The Great Famine Explained. And subscribe to the show on iTunes or wherever you get your podcasts to join me as I journey through the later years of The Great Famine in coming shows. Until next time, Sloan.